Hello everybody, my name is Zen, and welcome back to more Diablo Immortal closed beta goodness. We're going to take a look at the Necromancer today. It's going to be a bit of a deep dive. We're going to look at all the abilities, how they work, how they look, um, and talk a little bit about the class, uh, how it differs from Necromancers of old, and also, of course, how you can expect to be playing it um, in Diablo Immortal. So first thing we're going to do. Let's jump in and look at the skills. Um, there is going to be a little bit of a disclaimer. First off, it's closed beta. Uh, the game's not launching until the first half of next year. So things will change. And I don't just mean like things might change. I mean, things will change. Things are going to be um, rebalanced and, and just generally changed along the way. On top of that, while the skills may remain similar, the biggest changes here are going to be for legendary items because that's one of the easiest knobs the developers have for tuning. And when it comes to adding or removing or changing the legendary items, that's a lot easier to do than changing the skill itself. So keep in mind that we're not going to look at many of the legendary items. I'm just going to give you a, a preview of kind of what to expect. And uh, with that, let's let's talk about this. So you get two primary attacks. First one you get is soul fire. Um, it throws a ball of soul fire that explodes when it strikes. Uh, an enemy inflicting damage to the target and 25% as much to um, to all other nearby enemies. So it does basically uh, kind of like a little AOE burst around them. And then the ultimate ability for this one is Hungering Soul Fire. Enhanced Soul Fire for 12 seconds instead of launching um, or instead launching multiple greater bone spirits that seek out enemies. And deal damage targets hit multiple times simultaneously take 75 percent uh cum cum cumulative cumulative i can't say that word right now reduce damage it's like cinnamon uh, for each subsequent hit let's actually take a look at this real quick um basically it's that yeah that's what it is i mean it's cool don't get me wrong it's just it's basic. It, it, it is a cool starter one. However, uh, you also have Bone Spear. Now, this is going to be a bit more uh, up a lot of people's alleys, I think. But Bone Spear shoots a piercing Bone Spear forward that inflicts damage and pierces up to two additional enemies. Damage reduced 50% for each additional enemy pierced. And then I have a Legendary on right now that makes it so Bone Spear also poisons enemies um, for three seconds, which is really nice. Then the ultimate here is really cool. It actually looks really cool, but it enhances Bone Spear for 12 seconds, instead swinging a massive scythe. So it's not a Bone Spear at all. <laughs> that deals damage to all nearby enemies and knocks them away. And it's got a cadence. It does like uh, like a swing from left to right, a swing from right to left, and then a swing completely around you. It's, uh, it's really cool. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at Bone Spear real quick. That's it. Nothing too great there. The rest of these are going to go much faster, I swear. So now you have like a bunch of abilities that you get. First thing is bone armor. It's a buff that you get 20 second cooldown. Protect yourself and nearby allies with a shield of bones that absorbs damage for 12 seconds. Super nice if you need any kind of like support ability. Um, if you're just leveling, this is probably not going to be something you end up taking. But once you start getting into PvP and whatnot, this this item gets a lot better, especially when you have this legendary that I have. Uh, Bone Armor now grants you and all nearby party members five charges of damage immunity for 12 seconds. Each charge, prevent, charge rather, prevents all damage from a single hit, which means you, you, know, you can have these five charges on you and someone can power up like the biggest hit of all time and hit you and it absolutely does nothing. They have to hit you five times to get that off of you, which is really kind of nice. Um, we're we're going to put these on our bar as we go. Bone Spikes um, is 12 second cooldown. It kind of is what it sounds like. Summons Bone Spikes that erupt from the ground, stunning enemies for two seconds, dealing damage. Charging it longer increases range and damage, which is really nice. Um, then you have Bone Spirits. This one is interesting. It is a channeled skill. Unleash a continual barrage of Bone Spirits, dealing damage to enemies. Using Bone Spirits slowly consumes its energy, which recovers while Bone Spirits is not in use. And then Bone Wall. A lot of bones going on here. You might say, never mind, I'm not going to make the, the boner joke. <laughs> bone Wall is a 14 second cooldown. Conjure a wall of bones for 9 seconds that blocks the movement of all enemies and allies. Also blocks all enemy projectiles. Max 3 charges. Again, this goes back to the... 
this game has a pretty in-depth PvP scene, and this is actually really quite great for it. So let's check out Bone Armor, as you might expect. Ah, uh, there you go. As you saw, it, it had the circle around me. Um, it, that's, that was basically the range on it. This is Bone Spikes. So you see that I charge it up, uh, and this is the Spirits. So you just, you literally just like aim and shoot and you see that it slowly regenerates, but you can keep like, you know, it's cool. And then this is bone wall. I find it very interesting. So it literally just like, whoop, you know, you just throw up a wall real quick and they last quite a while, honestly, but yeah, it, proje it prevents projectiles from getting through um, and allows enemies to not be able to, to move. So it, it, I think that a necromancer in PVP who is quick with bone wall could potentially do a lot of destruction because you can single out or split groups of, of foes and it is really nice. So those are those abilities. Let's jump back into the other ones. Starting with Command Golem. You get this at 50, so I, I actually just picked this up. Uh, 55 is the max on the beta at the moment. And oh, by the way, a lot of these abilities do change as you level up. Uh, they get stronger, they get more effects for that. I'll give you the example for command, command Skeletons in a moment. But that kind of goes back into the whole closed beta stuff. Things will change, so I'm not really going to dive into the changes that happen as you level up. So this is a 36 second cooldown for Command Golem. Um, summons a Bone Golem for 24 seconds. As you can tell, it's it's timed. He's not out at all times. When summoned, it uh, will deal damage to all nearby enemies and stun them for two seconds. While it is active, you can order the Golem to leap to a nearby location where it will deal damage and force all nearby monsters to attack it for six seconds. This is a fancy little ability. I actually quite like it. It is nice for you know, doing challenge rifts and whatnot. If you feel yourself being a little squishy, it's nice to do that. Um, but it, when it, when it comes to PVP, it's cool for the stun, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna blow your socks off. Here's another summon, uh, command skeletons. This is like your bread and butter. You actually get this right off the bat. Um, and it starts out as one skeleton, but you slowly get more as you level up. Uh, cooldown eight seconds. We'll talk about the cooldown why in a second. Um, the passive raises the skeletal champion every eight seconds to a maximum right now of four skeletal champions deal damage per attack. It's not a lot, but when you have four of them, it does add up pretty quickly because the active ability on it. So that's passive. When you activate it, you command your skeletons to charge to a location and increase attack speed by 80% for four and a half seconds. It's pretty crazy. Actually, it's really good. You got the good old bread and butter corpse explosion. I really love corpse explosion um, more so than anyone could imagine. I think it's one of my favorite abilities in any game ever, but it's got a cooldown of one second. You can spam it, uh, detonate all corpses in a targeted area and it's a cone. So it is a pretty big area. Each corpse deals damage to all nearby enemies. Enemies struck by multiple simultaneous explosions take 40% uh, cumulative, there we go, got there eventually, <laughs> reduced damage for each additional hit. And then I have a legendary at the moment, where Corpse Explosion now also inflicts a stacking 25% chill for 3 seconds and deals uh, 1300 damage. When stacked 4 times, enemies will be frozen. I have another pair of shoulders for Corpse Explosion that also make it so the corpses get up and run to nearby enemies and explode, which is basically the blood rune from uh, Diablo three. And it, it works really well. I actually quite like it. Um, but this one just happens to be, it was a much better item than the other one that I have. So we'll pop that on and then corpse Lance summon projectiles from nearby corpses that impale the target and other random nearby enemies. Each corpse summons three lances that deal damage multiple hits to the same target deal 20 percent cumulative uh, reduced damage so i'm going to equip all these we are we are going to have to go actually kill things for the the corpse abilities but as you can see corpse explosion is straight up just a cone it's a fairly large cone um if you have no corpses as you can tell it tells you there whereas um corpse lance you're targeting enemies and then it in that giant circle that you see around me it will summon 
the, or it'll use, I said summon because the skeleton just popped out. It will use whatever corpses are in this area to fire them off. So that's how that works. Um, when I want to get my command skeletons to attack something, it's a very similar circle. They jump in, they get all blue, That then they have their buff. Whereas the command golem, we're going to go ahead and go ahead and use this on some enemies and then do some corpse explosion. So you can see that. Let's get these all grouped up. Get him in there. Get them in there. I don't, I don't really have anything except for my um, my bone spear. So kind of waiting for our skeletons to do stuff. But you can see it just literally explodes the corpses there. It's really nice. Bunch of damage. Gotta love it. So let's look at Corpse of Lance now. Because actually, I think the, the effect on Corpse Lance looks really cool. Um, let's get some people in there. Get some things dead. <laughs> so we can actually Corpse Lance. Oh, what do you mean no corpses nearby? Oh, a ghost. Did the ghost not leave a corpse? Because that may end up being a bug. So you can see there, it just kind of launches them. Like so. I have no corpses again. It's hard to do when I don't have any like main primary damaging abilities. So I'm probably gonna go switch those out if I need to go demonstrate more corpse stuff. But you're getting the idea. It shoots them like that. It does a bunch of single target damage. It's actually really nice for single target. Whereas like corpse explosion is more your bread and butter AOE spam ability, especially with the legendaries that I have. But again, you're having to deal with like this cone. So you, it's, there's a little bit more skill in this corpse explosion of positioning yourself correctly to actually get the corpse explosion to go off and get all of the corpses that you want to explode. Or there's more skill in it in the fact that you can say, you know what? I don't want to explode all of these corpses. I want to kind of save it because I know I'm going to overkill here. So that's something to consider. All right, let's jump back into the skills. The final ones, uh, we have Dark Curse. It's a control ability. Curses all enemies in the area, dealing damage to them over six seconds and greatly reducing their vision. Obviously, this has very little effect in PvE. Who cares about the vision <laughs> of a random ghost or skeleton? But when it comes to PvP, this is incredible. Uh, you know, imagine like most of your screen going dark because now suddenly you can't see. It is... Uh, extremely powerful and it's a 12 second cooldown so pvp it's really nice to use in grim scythe uh i th i find this to be my bread and butter ability here here actually let's put dark curse on there even though you're not really going to get to see it um where did, where did dark curse go equip uh let's put it here actually i'm gonna put grim scythe there and then i'll put dark curse here. so grim scythe Nine second cooldown, slash with a summoned scythe, dealing damage to all enemies in front of you. Each enemy hit generates a corpse up to a maximum of two, maximum two charges. Um, this is why this is kind of the bread and butter ability for me at the moment, is because I am using those corpses for corpse explosion and whatnot. It's, um, I'll talk about kind of what I recommend at the moment for builds and, you know, how to kind of get around stuff. Because uh, it's just, it, you know, this necromancer behaves differently than the others. Uh, so Skeletal Mage sounds kind of basically similar to Skeletal Mage when it comes to Diablo 3, but 24 second cooldown. The reason it's 24 second cooldown is because of my legendary. Otherwise, it is much shorter than that. Um, summon an immobile skeleton uh, for 13 seconds that throws bolts of soul fire in a direction, each dealing damage to enemies in the bolts pass. You may not command more than six total skeletal champions and skeletal mages. The reason it says that, it, I mean, you technically, if you just have the unlegendary version of skeletal mage, um, you can get two out at a time. There is a small overlap on them. It's only a couple seconds. But the thing is, and this is something to consider, when you have, let's say, four of your skeletons out, um, and then you have... Oh no, I don't. No, my my controller just disconnected. Um, I don't. I I don't think that this is really going to matter with your command skeletons. But what it will matter with, and I think what is more important, is if you happen to get a bunch of cooldown globes, um, which they're like little purple, 
um, and you get them and it resets your cooldowns, you could spam this a bunch of times if you have a few of them out on the ground. And it's something I've done, but you can't have more than six at a time, which is important, especially when you have this freaking legendary. Skeletal Mage now summons a powerful Grim Reaper that deals damage with each attack, but its cooldown is increased to 24 seconds. <sighs> It's one of my favorite abilities. <laughs> it's really cool. All right, let's look at um, the... Actually, you know what? Let's get rid of Command Skeletons real quick and put on Race Form, which is... It's okay. It's uh, it's movement ability, 9.5 second cooldown, transforms into a Wraith, gaining 50% increased movement speed, and invulnerability for 2 seconds during this time you can't attack. This is what it looks like. It's pretty cool. It's not great. <laughs> you know... Other classes have better mobility. Uh, monks has, have their dashing strike and stuff like that. and Heck, even Crusaders have their steed charge, which is really powerful. But when it comes to this, it's just it's the invulnerability that, that makes it okay. The movement speed, you're never going to really use it. I, I haven't ended up needing this for PvE content. Uh, even though bosses have like much more raid-focused type abilities that you might expect in an MMORPG where they're like big AOE abilities and you see them on the ground and you have to move out of it. Uh, this makes it really easy to do so, but if you're just paying attention, you don't need it to begin with. So that's something to consider. All right, let's check out Grim Scythe. I think it's cool. It does a big scythe and you can see it puts two corpses there. When it comes to the curse, it looks like that. Now they're all, they can't see, right? And then this is our, this is our Grim Reaper mage. And I'll show you the standard mage once I kill all this stuff and go back up. It's pretty cool, as you can tell. The Grim Reaper is rad. It, it has to be so far my favorite legendary that I've gotten, um, and I never want to get rid of it. It's really cool. It, it, I mean, it honestly makes Skeletal Mage just amazing. That's a really cool cooldown to hit, especially when you get those uh, cooldown reduction globes. All right, let's go switch this back out. Um, my standard build that I have been running has been Corpse Explosion because it's... It's nice. It's really nice for, for leveling up with AoE. And because right now I've got um, a legendary that's really buffing it. I, I found that in some situations, Corpse Lance was also quite good um, for like killing bosses and whatnot. Because for me, you know, if I'm playing Diablo, uh, most people who play Diablo know that having a build that where you can, you can clear the screen really fast, um, you could just AoE everything down is very powerful and increases your your speed of clearing stuff like rifts and whatnot and this is no exception it's the same thing so i for my pve build suggest definitely doing some kind of corpse explosion or corpse lance corpse lance once you feel like you're not killing bosses fast enough corpse explosion if you feel like you know you just um, need aoe or you know switch between the two depending on what what uh, legendaries you get command skeletons has just been solid they are really nice because they are they're out on the screen um and because they're out on the screen they they block projectiles and whatnot there's like a boss in um Leoric's tomb that that shoots like these big skulls and they just sit there and they just hit the boss but when the skulls come out they they block them and they get rid of them for you so you can just hide behind your skeletons it's really cool it's really nice uh, same kind of thing happens in Diablo 3, for example. And then let's take off this item to like show you standard skeletal mage. I think it's the... No, shoulders are the corpse explosion. It's got to be this one. Okay. Oh, my... Uh, hold on. My phone. There we go. It just like randomly disconnected from, um, from my capture software. Come on. Take it. Take it off. Wait. Uh, how do I unequip things? Boop. Uh, remove. There. Okay. This is what Skeletal Mage looks like standard. So it just sits there and it fires off bolts. It's, it's, it's cool and it does a lot of damage. And early on, you're going to be using this because it's really good. But if I had to, you know, pick a different ability, I would say that there's, uh, you know, Bone Spikes is actually a pretty good option there because it's got the stun. Um, it's got a lot of AOE, but once you get any kind of legendary you're basically going to be switched to any of these abilities so that's kind of my thoughts and suggestions there if you're going to jump in and play a necromancer overall how do i like it i think i like it more so than the other necromancers 
in recent times or at all. Like I like having a bunch of stuff in Diablo 2 running around with you know, skeletons and d- doing funny builds with it or like a, um, a corpse explosion build and stuff like that. It's fun. When it comes to Diablo 3, some of my favorite builds in Diablo 3 are on the Necromancer. I, I have a really fun <laughs> speed clear uh, corpse explosion build that is ridiculous. It's a lot of fun. Um, but the more end game builds are okay. They're not my favorite um, for the Necromancer. And then for this, the reason I like it more than the others is because I feel like, I don't know, I just feel it's more interactive. It, 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 you know, my, yeah, I have command skeletons and they're basically the AI on them are, it's not much better than Diablo three. And if you have command skeletons, you're going to be living the life of, I can't do that right now because you're going to be constantly <laughs> in combat. And if you're turning in quests or you're trying to do things like that, it's going to keep saying that you can't do that in combat and you have to wait for your skeletons to, it's, it's really annoying. It's stupid. But if you take that AI aside, these little guys do a lot of damage. They block a bunch of stuff. And they're just generally really good to have. So I don't really feel burdened by them. I actually feel empowered by having my skeletons. And then my skeletal mage having the Grim Reaper thing is just the coolest thing ever. I love it. So between my skeletons, my, my specifically my command skeletons and my skeletal mage, um, that covers like all of the single target damage I have. And then I just use my corpse explosion to blow everything up. The reason the scythe tends to be my bread and butter is because... Unlike, and this is going to sound crazy, but unlike every other class in Diablo Immortal, this is really the only class with some kind of uh, resource. I know it's crazy if you if you've never actually noticed, but no, nothing in this game has a resource. No, there is no rage for the barbarian or or there's no uh, wrath for the crusader and there's there's no spirit for the monk and there's no arcane power for the wizard and it's. They're all just, they, they're all cooldown based. Everything is cooldown based, which is really nice. And you don't even notice it because it's done so flawlessly. And the first time I noticed it, it blew my mind that actually there is no resources. But the Necromancer has technically the only resource in regards to corpses. And you can't generate them unless you're killing things. So the only ability to generate at the moment, outside of potentially other legendaries that I haven't seen or anything like that, is the scythe and you have to hit targets with it but it generates as you you know we'll come down here and i'll show you any target hit is generating those little corpses um i think up to two so it's nice that you can generate corpses that way with it and that's why i like using it because it goes hand in hand with corpse explosion or corpse lance and that that's also kind of a unique thing it makes the the class feel like it stands out a bit but if you're not dealing with corpse explosion or corpse lance there's no reason to use the scythe Otherwise, you're just going to have a bunch of corpses around that you can't use. So I like that. I like that the build feels like you have a bunch of options. I like that the it's uh, it has options for PvP. You know, bone armor is really good in PvE or PvE because there's a lot of um, like big group content that you could do in PvE, uh, such as the Heliquary bosses and whatnot, or just like doing Hell 2 dungeon runs and stuff like that. Um, Whereas I also think that Bone Wall is an amazing PvP ability because you can block movement of all enemies and allies, which it sounds crazy that you can block, you know, ally. You control your allies, but but if you're really good with this, if your StarCraft II levels of um, oh, what are those stupid things called from the Protoss, the sentries with the little walls, if you're if you're that level of skilled with this Bone Wall, you are going to absolutely destroy people because you're going to be able to cut them off from their allies. You're going to be able to single people out and blow them up. And that is extremely powerful. So Bone Wall is cool for PvP. Obviously, Bone Armor is also cool for PvP if you can shield all your allies. Like, there's a lot of cool stuff. Dark Curse is great for PvP. And a big focus on this game does you know, consist of their cycle of strife PVP system. So the fact that you have really cool PVP abilities as the Necromancer is awesome. You're not going to be able to generate corpses or anything like that, uh, you know, consistently. So it's something that you have to consider when building out your character. And I like that there are these differences. Um, the legendaries so far have been okay. Uh, obviously the shield with the, the grim reaper 
um, inscription is awesome or these shoulders that I got that make it so my um, uh, my corpse explosion has the chill effect is really cool. Or even this one with the oops, with the bone armor being able to grant the damage. It just doesn't want to go down. Damage immunity um, is really nice. But I also have had several other legendaries that are just like corpse explosion is increased by 10% damage. And it's like, that's really boring. And I'm really interested to see what legendaries we get, um, you know, once the game actually launches and what other legendaries I haven't seen yet. But so far, I like this necromancer more than every necromancer that we've seen in these games since. So with all that being said, let me know what you guys think of the necromancer. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to get back to them. Make sure you're subscribed for more Diablo Immortal goodness. I've got a bunch of stuff still coming, including discussing whether or not this game is paid to win. That'll be a juicy video. With all that being said, though, we shall see you guys next time.